Well, it's crazy. In the late 90s, early 2000s, I didn't know anyone that overdosed. And now, I mean, I hear about people overdosing and dying uh, multiple times a week. When the overdose crisis got declared a public health emergency, uh, or what we're now calling a toxic drug poisoning crisis, um, I became pretty acutely aware that I wouldn't be alive if I was still using opioids. When I got onto the job site, I found that um, it was a very comfortable place for me to be. School for me was uncomfortable. I didn't feel like I really necessarily fit in among my peers. But when I found construction, I found a lot of people like myself. I had a tough story in my life leading up to that. And uh, the construction industry was a place where a lot of people with tough stories found a great place to, to make a living. Probably by about age 15 to 16, definitely by 15, um, I, uh, I realized that I quite enjoyed the feeling of uh, intoxication, of drinking, and uh, it became a big part of my life. You know, if I could uh, work hard, uh, work extremely hard during the day, and then, um, you know, put down your tools, and then head to the bar, or, or head to the cooler in the back of a pickup truck, inevitably turned to uh, unwinding, turned into partying pretty hard. My substance use came before the oil rigs. In Saskatchewan and many of the other prairie regions, it's pretty easy to get drawn into it at a young age as there's really not much else to do. And uh, joining the oil rigs and it had just kind of advanced it. With the acceptance of more money, um, less time, you know, disconnection from friends and family. A lot of guys that I've worked with are working paycheck to paycheck, so there's not really space for missing time off work. Uh, you get stuck in maybe a mindset or, or a way of thinking that's like, well, if I take this substance, I can, I'll be able to get through the day. There's also a reward element, I believe, in it. You know, you accomplish a lot. Guys are proud of their work. Wrapping it up with some drugs or some drinks is pretty normal. There's a celebration of the suffering. Uh, we're proud that we work in that rainstorm or in the mud. We're proud of moving the concrete and lifting the heavy lumber. Good people go out and have a little fun. They end up home alone and the intention was never to cut their life short. They just wanted to feel different or to take a break or blow off some steam. I tried to carry out the, the con, if you will. I wanted people to know that uh, I was in control, that I knew what I was doing, but it was like a double life. The Jekyll and the Hyde would come out and it would take me to dark places and to, um, into situations that were very dangerous. I'd begin using in my vehicle, uh, in my commute home. I would head into my room and use until very early in the morning. Uh, where I would finish with one drug and I would switch to another so that I could get back out of the house again and fake my way through another day of work. I was driving down the road. I'd been impaired from the night before and I'd fallen asleep at the wheel and I essentially drove the truck and trailer with equipment on it into the ditch. And uh, it was my driller's truck, my boss's truck. And uh, it, you know, it took on a big file and report and I, was, I lost my employment due to it happening. It was an incident, a recordable incident, and um, the company was actually penalized for it too. I lost my brother, um, who I love dearly, to addiction. He was a carpenter and he was injured at work and on a, a permanent pension and had become addicted to medically prescribed opioids. Had so much pride in the work that he did as a carpenter but he just could not overcome the pain that he was in, the physical pain from the hard work that he did for his many years of his life until he had broken his back. What we're really up against is that people still haven't admitted to themselves that the risk has changed. 
It's not your dad's drug supply. I do believe that we need to be more open to different pathways. And for the longest time, uh, the only pathway was abstinence. Uh, it was go to treatment, get sober, and, uh, and then you go on with your life. There's much more nuance in there. We gotta support people in the process opioid agonist therapy, safe supply. My life completely stabilized when I got on Suboxone. It was game changer. All the times in my career that I struggled, I felt like I had to keep it a secret because I didn't want to lose the respect of the people around me. I didn't feel like there was anybody I could talk to about where I was at. If you see that somebody is struggling and you don't know why, it doesn't make sense. If they're having too many fights with their family members, if they're constantly having to move homes, if they're showing up in less than satisfactory condition from work, check in, ask them some direct questions. You might save their life. I knew that I had a problem, but I couldn't find a way to ask for help. And, um, I'm so grateful that I finally did and there were people there that would listen and wanted to listen and wanted to help. That I could find out that, uh, that I wasn't a bad person. That I just, I had an illness uh, and uh, an addiction and I, I couldn't control it on my own. I needed, I needed help. Now that I'm able to be sober and free um, from my addiction, I, I help people essentially in the oil and gas industry now. I've actually noticed a few people on my rig crew personally that are taking a step away from um, going to the bar after work like they usually do and just being able to be safe because they don't want to be the reason that somebody else loses their life because they make a mistake. If you're a person who's hiding, using your drugs for whatever reason behind closed doors and don't want to bring it into the open, then it's imperative you connect with some kind of resource, some person that's safe for you to talk to them about that and find a way that you can protect yourself. Overdose prevention sites, safe consumption sites, get your drugs tested. You can use an app and be witnessed or at least have someone check in on you. I feared I would lose my job. I feared that people would hate me, my family would abandon me and none of that has happened. Not a single one of the things that I feared has come true. The people around me love me, the people around you love you, and they just wanna see you healthy.